about to listen to The Dr. Dahlia Show. Sassy, stimulating medical talk radio. Any medical advice Dr. Dahlia Wax gives on her show should not be substituted for an actual visit to your medical provider. And now, here's Dr. Dahlia. On the Dr. Dolly Show. Thank you all for tuning in. 1877 Doc Dolly, 1877 D O C D A L I. So uh, the show uh, <clears throat> would have been a little bit rough um, because air conditioning had pooped out in the studio. And uh, one of the biggest things to afflict people, second to COVID <laughs> this summer, is uh, your air conditioning pooping out. I see on Facebook and social media the AC crapped out, crapped out, pooped out. Uh, why, by the way, the defecation metaphor? I don't get that. I mean, isn't your releasing p- stool a good thing? Dumping it out of you, isn't that a good thing? But instead, we use this metaphor or this uh, crapped, we use that term uh, uh, for something bad happening. Um, uh, and uh, it's actually very medically necessary, people. Not, though, when it comes to air conditioning. And I get a little nervous, especially when it's 110 degrees, 120 degrees, higher humidity, not not good. Uh, so, uh, you know, we luckily um, you know, are able to uh, get a repair person to come. And God bless them. I, I used to think the biggest heroes in the world were our military, <laughs> our firefighters, our police officers. When you don't have air conditioning... You look at your air conditioning repair person as Superman. I mean, they are just the biggest heroes in the world. My Everybody else are heroes too, but I tell you, when your air conditioning poops out, wow. So first thing uh, you do is, one, check your other power sources. We want to make sure your fridge isn't also pooping out. Um, uh, make sure this isn't something that's more of an electricity issue as opposed to the air conditioning um, the thermostat might not be set properly. Your air filter could be dirty. You could have blocked vents, reducing airflow. That's why you got to make sure that you still keep those clean. Uh, I am no air conditioning expert, but from what I learned with my father, could be a fan motor, condenser, capacitor failing. Uh, there's, you know, so uh, your coils could have dirt on it. They could be frozen. Could have a frozen evaporator coil. So you, you really want to make sure you have professionals that can come in, make sure, see what's going on. But in the meantime, you need to stay cool. And people make a big mistake. They you know, go, oh, man, the air conditioning's out. Let's open all the doors and get the fresh breeze in. If your house was at 79 degrees or 84 degrees before the air conditioning pooped out, I don't think it's the wisest thing to do to open up the windows and let the 120 degree air in. I understand you feel a little hot. It is not comfortable being in a 90 degree room, but a 90 degree room is better than a 120 degree room. Listen, I've made that same mistake too, because I'll go to the neighbors. I'll, I, I want to tell everybody, you know, the, the, the old Facebook was going outside in the middle of the neighborhood. Hopefully, you know, you got some pants on. And, you know, tell everybody, my air's out. What about you all? What's going on here? Uh, so, you, you know, just keep the doors closed. Close and cover your windows. Shut your curtains. A lot of times we think, well, it's daytime. We need the daylight. Our cats want to look out the window. You need to try to conserve whatever you have in terms of your energy and your cooling. You also need to close the gaps. You know, we, we might seal them in the winter, to prevent cold air from coming in, well, same strategy as it you know, pertains to air conditioning. Southern Living has also some really, really nice tips. They also remind us that I've spoken about on the show when we had a house fire where hot air rises, heat rises, cold air sinks. So let's say you are in upstairs, downstairs. Let's say you do have a upstairs, downstairs house. Right? Stay downstairs. It's going to be cooler than upstairs. You could also... You know, maybe get a board game, sit on the ground, play a little bit cooler than standing up, walking around while, I don't know, I don't know Netflix is on. I don't know. I, I, I know it's not much, but still, it's something to know. Uh, understand that some rooms may be more insulated than others. If there's fewer windows 
or that window abuts the west versus the east. And so it's the the sun hasn't yet set, so it's been in the shade. That room is going to be cooler. Understand that. Another thing also is start to look at your appliances and see what you could do to minimize. Like my laptop produces a lot of heat. Computers produce a lot of heat. You know, if you don't have to have a lot of tech on, don't do that. Now, some of us will say, you know what, I want to cook. Let me make myself some comfort food. I'll do some arroz con pollo or let me bake a pie. Uh, No, just I would do some lighter fare, maybe salad, some fruit, something a little lighter, less, less heavy. Just try not to cook. Now, fans are fantastic. You know, you could use fans to blow air out. You could use fans to blow air in. You know, um, they say you could set your fan to rotate counterclockwise to make the room's temperature uh, feel. You, you could play. I mean, I'm no fan expert, but circulation does help. And at night, you could have the windows open, run the exhaust to move the cold air in and the hot air out quicker. Some people put a wet towel over their fans. And a wet towel, you got to be careful because they don't want you starting a fire. Uh, but, um, or you can hang, you know, wet towels around the fan and that will blow colder air. And so that kind of seems to be nice. Um, ice, sometimes have ice around. I don't want you putting ice on your body, but, you know, using ice, using cooler things. I always keep in my freezer ice packs, especially if somebody is at risk for heat illness and, you know, um, but ice packs are really, really great because you could, as long as your freezer is working and you don't have a power outage, you could use those ice packs, you know, and, you know, put them under your clothes, things like that to help cool you off. If it's too hot, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen, get out, find another place to stay. Now I, I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. The hotels can be pretty pricey. Some of the motels are cheaper. And I think you can even rent by the hour in some places. But, uh, uh, you know, if you think when your air conditioning goes out, you'll be able to just get a room, uh, not not so easy. So see if there is a place you could stay because we don't want you sweltering in the heat. one eight seven seven doc Dolly, don't go away. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that's MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save the typical family 500 bucks a month, and that's huge, but it's also true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The customer satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan, double MediShare works. It's been around for more than a quarter century, and members have shared more than $3 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want to plan you're happy with, you can call right now and get a price within two minutes. A very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. 855-SHARE-40. That's 855-SHARE-40. 855-SHARE-40. Hey guys, it's Dr. Dahlia. Fantasy football season is coming, but sadly, too many of you are taking the bench while the country takes part in one of the most exciting and lucrative industries out there. Don't know how to play? Well, huddle up and listen. Paul Kalikas and I have written a fantasy football pocket guide for beginners. This book walks you through the basics and shows you how simple and lucrative joining or creating a fantasy football team can be. Read our Fantasy Football Pocket Guide for Beginners found on Amazon or follow the links on X and Facebook. That's Fantasy Football Pocket Guides for Beginners. Don't be left out. In a study, it was found that 33% of 44 herbal supplements had no trace of the advertised herb. Don't let that happen to you. Hi, this is Dr. Mitch. If you want to ensure quality, please go to TotalWellness.com. Supplements made for physicians only now available to you too. TotalWellness.com, helping you to look good, feel good, and enjoy Total Wellness. All right. 
We are back on the Dr. Dahlia Show. Thank you all for tuning in. one 877 doc one 877 docdali Big thanks to Talk Media Network for making the show happen. And big thanks to Daniel, our producer. Okay, I need everybody to just kind of take a deep breath before they start calling for age limits of our political figures. And you guys need to watch and see what the world has done. And also make sure you're still all on the same playbook. Okay. Because we have progressed to not being discriminatory. Right. We are trying to have a country where there's no racism, no homophobia, no anti woman, no anti man. No anti-LGBTQ, AI+. And you start to come up with age limits. Um, I thought we were also trying not to be ageist. And what's happening is because many Americans do not like our two political candidates. They think now it's a popular narrative to say, all right, age limit. And what you don't understand is once you start to do that, it gets very convoluted. And now you're setting precedence in terms of our medicine, in terms of other industries. And if you're going to say 75 years old is too old to be president, you're there's going to be ramifications later on down the line. It, it, we, the, the big problem Americans do is they get dangled a little simple phrase or sentence and they go, no problem there. And then all of a sudden they don't understand that then there's all these other ramifications that follow. And so we are our biggest threat right now. Right, We may think is, oh, it's a Biden-Trump election. Yeah, No, the the, the bigger threat is we have a lot of distraction going on right now. Everybody's trying to distract us. There's some big, George Clooney comes out, and now we have a little George Clooney, White House, little tiff. I, I don't know what's going on, but I'm a little nervous. And meanwhile, while we're distracted, it's absolute chaos at the border. Our healthcare system is in a lot of trouble. And there is going to be a huge, huge, huge push for socialized medicine. And we have our seniors who are going to be some of the biggest victims in the coming years if we don't figure out how to, you know, reemphasize that their role is important and that our seniors deserve care and not get written off because of their age and what what doesn't make sense is you could have a 45 year old person that isn't cognitively ready to be commander-in-chief you know for those of you that were around during the obama administration Biden was very limited with his public speakings because they said he had gaffes. Biden had gaffes. So when Biden was in his, what, maybe 60s, he was you know, showing that he was having issues. Now, I'm not saying he had cognitive deficit then, but you want to pick a random age. That's not the problem we have. We need to know that anybody who is going to be a political figure, represent America or make decisions that affect our military, that affect affect our children, that affect our education, that affect is competent and non-biased. And when you hear everybody bring up age, it is a distraction to not bring up the cognitive testing. Bring up the cognitive testing. Uh, you know, uh, if I was Biden, I would love to be a Democratic strategist or a Republican strategist because I see mistakes on both sides. If I was Biden's PR person, okay, rather than this is an absolute mess, I'd say take the test and I'll, I'll show you guys what the test is. Just, just take the test, do a press conference. Now he is doing a press conference later today, but you want to put this to rest, do the test. 
Now, or do the test privately. If you can't, you need to leave. That's your duty. When you put your hand on the Bible and you promise to protect and serve and you know, fulfill your public service duties, now, if you're not fit for the job, now, if you're drunk, you don't go into the OR if you're a doctor. You're not, you don't, you, if you cannot do your job, you need to step down. And so very easily, this can all be handled. You know, everybody's like, well, you know, he's 81, he's 81. They're trying to bring up the 81. So nobody brings up the cognitive test. What is it that people are complaining about? I mean, somebody could have arthritis. Somebody could have, I mean, he's had cerebral aneurysms. He's had blood clots. You could have physical issues and still be in public service as long as your cognition is there and you are able to do the job. If you cannot, and I understand we have ADA accommodations, and I understand that Biden would qualify for accommodations to sleep more, et cetera. But if there is a better person who could do the job, considering everything else is going on, put them there. I don't care if they're 82. I don't care if they're 42. I don't care if they're, I don't know, 57. But they have to be cognitively there. And so, you know, I, I, I think every time I hear people bring up the age, they're sidestepping the cognitive tests. That's just, you know, and, and again, his doctors have a lot of explaining to do why that hasn't been done. And once you say, what, what number are you going to choose, people? 75? So 75 is too old to be president. Is that too old to drive a car? Is that too old to get certain benefits? Is that too old to be able to still receive medical care when we start to go to a system where we have to triage? Be very, very careful because I'm telling you all, you all are going to be 75 years old one day, God willing. And you are not going to like this idea that, oh, there's an age limit. Now, now an argument everybody makes, makes is, well, there's minimum age standards. There's a, Well, of course there's minimum age standards. You can't have a 15-year-old. A minimum age standard is not, not the same as cutting it off at a certain age. You know, one of the issues Medicare patients are saying is they say, I'm too old to get the test, yet I want the test. If you want a mammogram when you're 76, you should be able to get a mammogram. But if insurance isn't going to cover it because you're over the age, that's a problem. And so we we'll, here's the thing. It sounds simple. Nobody should be president over the age of 75. It sounds very simple. People think it's bipartisan. They think it's a piece of cake. I'm telling you right now, the second you put that in writing, there's going to be ramifications. And you are going to have a tough time removing it. I mean, uh, you know, people are going to vote who they want. If people did not want Trump, who's 77 years old, is he 77 or 78? I think he's 77. People didn't want Trump, then they would have, during the primary, voted in Nikki Haley or somebody younger. If people don't want Biden, then they would have voted in the primary somebody younger. Okay, the, the age limit say no, based on your birth certificate, you can't apply. You, 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 you're you really starting to open up a can of worms. But making everybody take a cognitive test it has to be objective. You can't have somebody say, oh, they failed. It could be you know, it could be right there in public. So all doctors could say, yep, yep, he passed it. They're very um, easy to grade. They're easy to see. You can see that nobody helped them. They and I'll, I'll again review what a, a very mini mental status exam would look like. Um, but, I, you know, I, I, I think you guys are falling in the trap. Because you all are going to be 75 one day. And that, th this isn't just about running for president. This isn't just about representing your country. This is going to be also about your health care. This is going to be about your ability. If, if somebody decides to step up and say, hey, we have a lot of accidents because of elderly drivers. And if they were able to do an age limit like that, when it came to that, they're going to do an age limit on driving. You know, we we got to be very, very careful.
what 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 the way laws work is if it is said somewhere deep 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 in some library or some precedent or some that can be used against people in the future see i like fewer laws i like government being involved less and us having more power that's how i look at things and so if everybody's worried about biden because of his cognition then say it like it is do the cognition test but don't be trying to kind of uh, let's call it h one eight seven seven Doc Dolly, don't go away. Doctor Dahlia here. Are you tired, burned out, gaining weight, succumbing to the daily pressures of life? Well, how's your dopamine doing? How you feel right now? How you'll feel an hour from now? And how you'll feel next week is completely reliant on your dopamine. Our daily motivation and willingness to push through challenges depends on the intricate chemical process dopamine provides. Christian Kalikas and I created Deploying Dopamine, a book that tells you what dopamine is, when it dysfunctions, and how to successfully deploy it when needed. Find Deploying Dopamine on Amazon today. Check it out. At Hotshot Secret, we share the science behind common diesel problems. For example, diesel fuel cetane levels. The cetane rating in diesel fuel is 42 to 45. Most diesel engines operate more efficiently with a cetane rating of 48 to 50. One treatment of Hotshot Secret Diesel Extreme will raise your cetane 7 points, increase fuel economy, and improve cold starts. Hotshot Secret Diesel Extreme is available nationwide at truck stops, fine farm and auto stores, and online at hotshotsecret.com. Hotshot Secret, powered by science. We are back on the Dr. Dolly Show. Thank you all for tuning in. 1877 Doc Dolly, 1877 D O C D A L I. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter or X at Dr. Dahlia and on Facebook, the Dr. Dahlia Show. Um, we say goodbye today to Shelly Duvall, 75 years old. And Shelly Duvall was one of those actresses that never seemed to age. And unfortunately, she has passed at the age of 75. The shining star died of complications from diabetes, was in her home at Blanco, Texas. Um, she um, apparently died in her sleep, very peaceful. And so the Hollywood Reporter said, my dear, sweet, wonderful life partner and friend left us too much suffering lately, and now she's free. Fly away, beautiful Shelly, according to Dan Gilroy, her life partner since 1989. So she was, remember Popeye? I think she played olive oil. I didn't know much about her because she was in movies I couldn't see when I was younger. Um, cause I was, yeah, you know, she was a little bit before my time, but I do remember her in the Popeye movie. I didn't really like the Popeye movie that much, but I remember she did a good job as olive oil. And, uh, I think she played Annie Hall and a variety of other things. And, um, I do need to see The Shining. I, I do. I've, I kept, I, I, I <laughs> listen, we have what, you try to catch up on all the movies you have to see. I did not. I have not seen The Shining. I never did because that came out when I was a kid or maybe before. Well, anyway, so, um, you know, may she rest in peace. Uh, I, you know, see these actors and actresses who, you know, you uh, just remember from your childhood and it's it's hard to see. But, you know, hopefully she's at peace. one eight seven seven doc one 877 docdali So we're being told that half of all cancers are caused by six lifestyle factors. And uh, we, we, we all know these, but it's another, I guess, conversation that comes up that needs to be reminded. And so they say, according to a new report published by the American Cancer Society, four in 10 cancer cases and nearly half of all cancer deaths in Americans over 30 years old are linked to the following smoking cigarettes that's a no-brainer we know that being overweight using alcohol being inactive eating a poor diet and getting too much sun other factors like secondhand smoke exposure eating red meat having unprotected sex where you could get hpv or hiv a diet low in calcium was also identified as a cause of a number of cancer cases But the top six categories, smoking, being overweight, 
using alcohol, being inactive, eating a poor diet, and getting too much sun. Now, um, cigarette lung cancer is still the number one cancer killer. Number one. And, and even though we have a lot of people who have stopped smoking, we are declining when it pertains to tobacco. It still is. Eventually, it will be overtaken by something else, but it still, unfortunately, is one of the largest groups. But where this American Cancer Society reminder you know, uh, sh- should be you know, used, and, and I'm grateful for the work they do, is the being overweight and being inactive, a lot of us fall into that group. And for you to not have a lot of cancer in your family, have low risk factors, but now your activity has changed because you work from home or because you like to binge on Netflix, you could be upping your cancer risk. I mean, these are things that that I don't think a lot of people realize. And our recommendation in terms of activity, doing 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise a week is inadequate to me. So let's say you have two 75-minute workouts on the weekend and you're sitting all day, every day during the, the work week. No, you're going to be at risk. And so what we need to do is come up with a, you know, uh, you know computers used to not be a thing. Now, secretaries used to type, you know, in the 70s and 80s and all that. But now with computers, we have more and more people that are now computer bound. And their days are all about the computer. That's a problem. So yes, cancer rates are going to continue to go up. Being overweight, it doesn't take a lot of weight to be overweight. Our threshold for overweight is starting to lower because we realize if your BMI is you know, not as is rising or you're having uh, abdominal obesity, which is another thing too. It's not just about your BMI, body mass index. It's also about where is your weight. If you don't have a waist anymore, if you have large abdominal girth, that could put you at risk for heart disease. You know, we talked about pear-shaped and apple-shaped figures and all that. We, we need to get back to being thinner, slender. Fat hurts us. And I really worry about this Ozempic craze because I don't see a lot of people have permanent weight loss and I don't see a lot of people able to get their medicines long term. I understand a lot of pharmaceutical companies are trying to jump in on the market and try to make more products. And maybe in the next few years we'll have more products. But right now it's touch and go when somebody could get their medication or not. That's a problem. Eating a poor diet, that's a lot of us. We might think it's good, but like, you know what? I got a frozen um, vegetable kale bowl. It's, you have chemicals and preservatives in those frozen foods. You got to get fresh foods in you. And trust me, every now and then I like a burger. I don't eat them a lot, but every now and then, yeah, I do like an In-N-Out or a McDonald's burger Maybe once in a while a Chick-fil-A, but that's rare because I try to cook my own food. I am done with the preservatives and all the other crap that go in our food. So when it comes to colon cancer, when it comes to, well, skin cancer, skin cancer is a biggie. Yeah, and and a lot of us have abnormal lesions. I mean, I've had some precancerous stuff because I'm very fair. And growing up in Vegas and Phoenix and California, you're out in the sun. We do need sun for vitamin D, but we are struggling on what to urge people, how to guide people. If you are indoors all day and you look doughy and pasty, that's not healthy. If you're outdoors and looking leathery and spotty and having cancerous, that's not healthy. We have to come up with sun exposure 
that is fairly safe, gives you your vitamin D, but then also, you know, it, I, I don't know when we're going to come up with an answer for that. Because I think it's not only about the vitamin D. Every time I go outside, I just feel better. Is it the sun? Is it the warmth? Is it the fresh air with the trees? Is it there's more to outside the indoors? When you're indoors, you become more vulnerable. That's why we try to get you out of the hospital as quickly as we can so you don't get sick. In fact, I was watching a health video from the 1940s. Not that I was around in the 1940s. And when they were talking about how to be healthy, this was a video for kids in a health class. They talked about eating well. They talked about regular exercise. And they talked about being outdoors. It has been something that we've always known. The problem is, is these the sun is a beast. I'm grateful for the sun. I bless, I'm thankful that we have the sun. If we didn't, we'd be dead. But the rays of the sun cause significant trauma to our skin. And so we have to come up with a, a plan. You know, and um, you know, I, I don't think lathering us up with sunscreen products, you know, ten times a day is healthy either. So maybe we, you know, allow certain parts of our body to have some sun exposure that we could watch closely and monitor for skin cancer. Um, use sun shirts, hats, glasses. But um, we, we definitely got some splaining to do. One eight seven seven Doc Dolly, don't go away. Considered by most, optimized curcumin is one of the few bioavailable and highly absorbable curcumin products on the market. Hi, I'm Dr. Mitch. Since most chronic diseases have inflammation, our optimized curcumin seems to be a perfect addition to any nutritional program. It makes sense to me that preventing or reducing inflammation is a key component to our overall health. The Mayo Clinic found that curcumin can decrease swelling and inflammation, has antioxidant properties, and research suggests that curcumin can prevent cancer, or at least slow the spread of cancer, and in many instances make chemotherapy more effective. It protects our healthy cells even from radiation. TotalWellness.com, where we help you to look good, feel good, and enjoy Total Wellness. Self-reliance. It's not a phrase we hear much in our culture these days. It might conjure up images of pioneers, the West, rifles, strapping men, and strong women. But what does it mean for us in today's world? The New American Magazine has just released its latest collector's edition, Self-Reliance, Foundation of Freedom. In it, the New American authors outline the necessity of self-reliance for a free people, tips for self-reliant living, and the importance of not giving up hope. This unique edition includes articles on the self-sufficiency of the founders, preparing for a worst-case scenario, firearms, financial self-reliance, the importance of community, and many other topics by expert writers. Now, for a limited time, The New American is offering a bundle of three collector's editions, Self-Reliance, The Great Reset, and Trump World, for just $19.95. Available at shopjbs.org. Visit shopjbs.org today. All right. We are back on the Dr. Dahlia Show. Thank you all for tuning in. one 877 doc one 877 docdali So I heard somebody make a comment as it pertained to President Biden that, you know what, he has a press conference coming up, then we'll see. Then we'll see what? If there's an issue? I, I, that's what people said about the debate. You know what? There'll be a debate. Then we'll see if there's an issue. There's been an issue. We know that. All right. Um, and uh, we, we shouldn't even be having these conversations about our commander in chief, but we do. And unfortunately, the situation we're in right now is all eyes are going to be on Joe Biden's first press conference 
I think of the year, I think this is his first solo press conference in a very long time that uh, it's been dubbed a big boy press conference where it's not just going to be one or two questions. This is supposed to be an actual, you know, kind of like a Trump press conference where he's up there going, what else you got for me? That's, I, you know, I, I uh, long overdue. I'm not a fan that it's happening at the NATO summit. Um, we that is not going to be the best place to air out our dirty laundry. And the questions are going to be probably really around, you know, how fit are you? Um, I, you know, it would have been nice for there to be a press conference the day after the debate, or is, but it, it's going to be at the NATO summit. And the White House has called it a big boy press conference, which I think might have come from a one of the people in the press pool saying none of these where it's scripted and he has a list of pictures of reporters and who to call on. And I think this is going to be 5.30 p.m. I, I, I thought it was supposed to be at 6.30 Eastern and then it might have gotten moved. So uh, I, don't quote me on the time of this uh eastern time but it's um i if, if this is i mean this is where we are right now now um I, I, what's happening is the democrats and the and house democrats and senators are trying to figure out what is the best mode of action and as i said last week it's not very easy to displace biden off the ticket after the went through the whole primary process and it's a bad look because i, I mean we were those of us saying he had a problem it shows we're right so they either have to double down on somebody who is really flailing. And, and it's not even just about his mental. I, he's not even running the country. The, the, the border, it, it's a mess. Um, uh, and do they sidestep Kamala Harris? Do they, you know, uh, the Democrats definitely don't want to have that look. Like they have Kamala Harris next in line on the ticket. And they instead preempt her with a male candidate a white male candidate that's why i don't know if they're going to be able to just put in gavin newsom saying okay kamala now you're going to follow gavin instead of biden so uh, you know most likely they're going to have to double down then on kamala harris which I, who knows what that is going to be like but you know people ask oh you know if we did do a cognitive test on biden which he severely needs you know what would that look like uh, there's a bunch of them but there's one, uh, there's like uh, the mini mental status exam, the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, the MOCA test, which has been called, um, asked uh, by many providers said you could run the MOCA test. So the MOCA test is the Montreal Cognitive Assessment. It's only 10 minutes long. It was created in 1996 for medical professionals to identify mild cognitive dysfunction, which is a precursor of dementia. It assesses concentration, attention, memory, language, and Daily Mail has a really nice breakdown of it. It shows you. It's hard for me to show you the pictures of it, but I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it. Uh, we aren't going to be able to necessarily take the test ourselves because you have to draw and do other things. But it looks at your attention, your language, your calculations, your memory, your concentration, your orientation, your executive functions, as well as your visual skills. Now, it's not necessarily a medical capability assessment, but it is supposed to be a screening tool to help us decide if you need the next step. I have been saying for years that Biden needs an MRI of the brain. We need to reevaluate his brain function, especially since he had cerebral aneurysms and other you know, issues. Um, and so a positive score on this will then... Uh, suggest that he needs cognitive function exam and, and because the the whole argument we're getting from the white house is uh the doctor said he didn't need it the doctor said a cognitive exam was not necessary what really do, do they are they licensed by the same licensing board that me and all of us other doctors have to be licensed in are they american doctors are they now, do they have the same standards 
I mean, I get it. You could have a foreign doctor that is under different standards and different board. But, but if you're practicing here in America, there, it's kind of obvious that a cognitive test would be warranted. So the reason why people are asking for this is if his doctors won't do the testing, then let us hand it to him. This was first used in Montreal, Canada. The test is now one of the most respected methods assessing cognitive health worldwide. It's available in a lang- hundred different languages and dialects. And um, if you fail the MOCA test, right, um, and, you know, then there's the next. Remember, this is just a very basic screening tool. If you do fail it or there's any concerns, then you could go into a 30 minute or a 60 minute evaluation there's more extensive so one is uh a part of it is where you write the first five letters of the alphabet and then you write the numbers the first five numbers on a piece of paper then you connect them with dotted lines in ascending order so on a piece of paper you put an a over here b c d e all over the paper then you do a one two three four five but then you have to connect them and you get a point for every successful pair. And you connect them with dotted lines in ascending order. By that, you would do you would connect one and A, then two and B, three and C. But also they suggest you can't be crossing your lines. Um and uh, so it's 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 a little different than some of the, but it it does it takes some executive function. Another is there's a cube, they a basic cube you know with the squares, and you are told to draw your own version of the cube next to it, but it needs to look like you can't be like well my cube is a circle, it has to look like a cube. For visual constructional skills, also they ask you to draw a clock. You put in all the numbers. But then you have to set the time to 10 minutes past 11. Now, a lot of you are thinking, my kid has only seen digital clocks their whole life. Well, this is why we still like to teach time and teach clocks and old school clocks. I think it is important. But somebody like Biden or Trump would know what a clock is and would be able to do that. So there has to be the clock face. Minimal distortion. The numbers must be present. You can't have additional numbers. Um, you know, the hands have to be pointed to 10 minutes past 11. Not not too difficult, but it could be for somebody with a cognitive deficit. Then you have to name each animal. So they have three animals there. A lion, a rhino, and a camel. Pretty simple. They have to just label them memory test where they give you words and then a few minutes later they ask you to reword them there's attention and other things sentence repetition verbal fluency abstraction uh i'll come back i'll tell you a little bit more don't go away one eight seven seven doc dolly Did you know that healthy arteries make a gas? <laughs> yes, actually three known gases. Hi, I'm Dr. Mitch, and nitric oxide is a gas that's readily made all day long to keep our arteries open by relaxing the blood vessel walls. By doing this, our circulation is increased, bringing blood, oxygen, and nutrients to every part of your body. Both age and poor diet can lead to a loss of this precious gas and in turn, blood pressure can go up, energy can go down, and you can get tingling in your hands and feet. Well, our product, Ultimate Nitric Oxide, can easily help fix this lack of nitric oxide. Go to TotalWellness.com. That's TotalWellness.com, where we are helping you to look good, feel good, and enjoy Total Wellness.